Hi everybody, my name is Todd Brannon and I am the Accidental Excelist. This is video tutorial number eight in a series of videos uh, or tutorials that I've created to uh, show you how to create a CRUD style app or tool in Microsoft Access. <clears throat> so it's based on the use case of a customer database that we have. So we have a single table of customer information and we have some uh, mock data that we uh, created or we generated from a website called uh, mockaroo.com that was in video number one and so we've also created a new user form or we're in the middle of building that new user form that will send new data to that database table and so this is how our form looks so far we formatted it and such and it's uh, showing us um, it's showing us the first record in that database uh, customer ID 4003 so one thing I wanted to go back to that I failed to show in previous videos and at the end of the last video I noticed that if I go back here to our design view if I need to change any of these labels and remember we've got a, um, a, a rectangle element here sorry I couldn't think of what I wanted to say, but um, we've got this rectangle element now, and if we want to select anything inside that element, we know that the rectangle itself is selected at this point because it's highlighted with that little orange highlight around it. I need to click outside that rectangle now, click back in it. And what I wanted to show you was if I needed to change these labels, um, I can click on it to make sure it's highlighted and I can click into it a second time and make adjustments like add spaces or retype something. But when I have a light font like this, that light default background makes it difficult to see. So I don't really even need to worry about that because I can come over to my property sheet. And if your property sheet's not showing, just click on uh, property sheet in the design tab. And then uh, you go down here to, um, I'm going to go to, um, what is it, all, and I'm going to go to, I'm going to find caption. So that's where you make those adjustments. So if I were to change this to no space between first and name and click out of that, you can see here it made the adjustment for me. So as long as I select that, I don't even have to click into it a second time to edit the text inside that label. I can just go over here to my property sheet and find caption and make the edit there and it'll do the same thing. So uh, that's a different uh, method to do the same thing and I failed to mention that in the last video so I wanted to make sure I covered that at the beginning of this video. Okay, so with that done, let's add uh, a couple of new elements. So I want to add a couple of buttons to this. We're going to have a save button and we're going to have a close button. And let me just get to the design part of that. So if you go back up in, into the uh, design tab, which is where we've been mostly for the most part up to this point. So you should be familiar with that. If you go to the controls group again in this uh, lineup here, you have this uh, rectangle with these four X's and that's a button. So if you click on that and then we come down here to our header next to customer, I'm going to go ahead, drag and drop this uh, rectangle to be our button and uh, <clears throat> it brings up this command button wizard. So with this, what we want to do is this will be our close button. So this will close our form and it's going to open our main form, which is yet to be developed so right now we're just going to set it up to close the form and so with this wizard we can do that so we go down here in categories to form operations and we select from the actions list close form then we click next and so in this step our wizard gives us a couple options uh, there's this default exit doorway button which is cool and this is all personal preference so if you like this rather than what I'm doing that's totally fine it's just the, the it's basically the concept that we're trying to stick with here so I like basically just to go with close I could use you know close form but I'm gonna select text and I'm just gonna uh, leave it at close and then I'm gonna click next it says a meaningful name will help you refer to the button later. So I like to just change this. This will be new customer. This is our new customer form. So I'll name it new customer, close, and then BTN. It's kind of the naming convention I go after. If you come up with something different, that's totally fine. Again, this is a personal preference kind of thing. 
Uh, I just try to stay with sort of a formula or a uh, naming convention that's good for me. So that's what I've used in the past, so I'll stick with that. So I click Finish, and now we have our Close button. So I can tweak this a little bit. I don't like it to be so fat and squatty like that. Um, I like to bring it bring it in a little bit more in in the same line as the, the same height as some of the text boxes. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. But uh, I bring it over here to the right side to kind of balance that out. Actually, I want to bring this uh, new customer label over. And then it kind of balances out, ba balances things out. So I can go back here to um, form view, and I can see what it's looking like. And I like it. It looks pretty cool. Uh, looks pretty professional and uh, user friendly there. So it uh, closes our form. And so if we click on that, uh, again, I didn't save the changes, so I'm going to go ahead and click yes. So I can double click my new customer form, and it brings up the form view. So again, let's test the close button, and sure enough, it works. So pretty simple, pretty easy. But when we um, create our main form, that's going going to be sort of our main jumping off point from when you open the uh, front end, eventually, we'll have this close button actually not just close the new customer form, but also open that main form so you can navigate back and forth between these windows um, more like a true software application. So now let's do the other button. Let's go back to design view and then let's, now that you know, let's go click on that button element and then we'll go down here to the bottom of our form. And then again, we're gonna use the uh, command button wizard. This time it's not gonna be a form operation, it's gonna be uh, record operations. And we're going to um, use the add new record actions. So we'll click next. And again, it's got some default uh, go to new with a picture here button, or it's got a pencil button you can choose from that. You can actually browse and uh, put in your own images. So if you have some icons or something you want to use for your forms, you can definitely do that. Again, I'm more of a text guy so I just want to go up here and select text and then I'll just type in save and then I'm going to call this I'm going to stick with that naming convention so this is new customer since this is a new customer form uh, it's new customer save btn and then I'll click finish and then there's our save button again I'm going to kind of reformat this to not be quite so squatty and Give it a little more width. I don't know if that brings it down too narrow. Nah, let's keep it like that. Now let's go to our form view and check that out. And there it is. Um, actually, I'm gonna be a little bit um, obsessive here and I'm gonna highlight that rectangle and I'm going to extend it down a little bit so I can bring the save button. Oops, hold on. So I can bring the save button down and remember I have to click outside that rectangle and I'm just going to use the arrow button one time to be precise and then uh, yeah so we uh, see that in the form view and it looks pretty good could probably have a little more on the bottom I'm not sure I think it's more I should compress these elements here so yeah that looks a little better looks a little more I don't know uniform a little more um, I don't know, spatially pleasing. Um, so let's go back to the form view, and there we have it. This has uh, got us where we need to be. Uh, the save button is not going to work just yet. Um, there's one thing I have to do. We're going to create the main form next. And then with that main form, main form I'm going to create a button that will open the new customer form and the, the code or what have you that's uh, built into that open uh, new customer form will dictate how this form opens and it'll open up to a new form so yeah so that'll be the next step and uh, we'll work on that we've got our uh, new customer form pretty much done here and then uh, in the next video we'll look at creating that main form and uh, start from there so i'll see you in the next video thanks everybody for watching please take a minute to like and subscribe and be sure to check us out at theaccidentalexcellus.com